Hello and welcome to episode 70 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is October 26th, 2020. Today I'm wearing a shawl that I knit this year and um, I knit it as part of the knit along that I did with my channel and my Ravelry group and the pattern is called Haruni and I used a three ply sock yarn by Opal so that's a bit thinner than normal um, sock yarn so I think it wouldn't be sock weight but lace weight yarn but it still has the um, color the beautiful colors that Opal always has in their yarns and um, so maybe it's a bit too much color for the pattern to come through but then most of the shawl has a very simple lace pattern and only the edge has this big beautiful leaf pattern and I think even though the yarn is quite busy you can still see the um, the nice lace pattern and I've added beads to the edge so I really really like the way this shawl came out and I believe it's the first time I'm wearing it on the podcast so this is today's shawl and the pullover I'm wearing it's um, almost a dress or you could call it a tunic so I just knit like a very long pullover um, it's just a very simple lace pattern it's um, it's not a pattern that I knit from it's just something I improvised um, I started at the bottom, knit up to the armholes, then I knit the sleeves and then I did the raglan shaping at the top and just added a tiny little bit of lace up here. Um, I think it's one pattern repeat but because of the fluffy yarn you can't really tell. So, um, But still it's, it's one of the few uh, one coloured pullovers that I have or dresses so it was very good uh, for pairing the shawl with and uh, yeah I'm very happy with this outfit. Um, the yarn is by Rico, it's called Fashion Light Luxury. It looks a bit like mohair but it's actually um, alpaca and that's been spun to, to be this fluffy. It's not a pure alpaca, it's a mix of alpaca and I think some polyamide um, but it's very very soft. It tends to pill quite a bit so after Several times of wearing it, you'll have this um, these fluffy thingies <laughs> on your pullover or dress or whatever. But I don't mind. I just like that it's so nice and uh, soft and it's very warm and it's quite light. It has a very good yardage um, uh, despite the fact that you can... I think it's... I knit this with a six or seven millimeter needle. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Then on to finished objects. Last week I didn't really have a finished object, even though the poncho I was knitting for the theatre was technically finished. I just hadn't realised that and the buttons were still missing. So I'll count it as a finished object, object today. I told um, them that it was done, but they haven't picked it up yet. So I still have it here to show you. And also the play that it's supposed to be in was um, cancelled because of Corona and um, they plan to uh, put it on next year. So I'll have to wait another year until I can see the poncho on stage. But I finished it and they are going to pick it up sometime, probably this week. But as it's still here, I can show you again. So this bit was the same last week, but I have added the buttons and this is what they look like. So I think they're a bit unusual, but I got them for a very good price in a very little shop here in Wiesbaden. And um, yeah, I think they go very well with the yarn and the design. And also for being on stage, it's nice to have them a bit uh, special, not just ordinary buttons. And this is what it looks like. I put them on the back and the front, I had added the um, buttonholes. And now the actor can the actress can decide whether she wants to keep it all buttoned down or maybe just use one one of the buttons, depending on how much she moves and how quickly she needs to take it, uh, put it on or take it off. So, yeah, so that's my theatre costume poncho for the Staatstheater Wiesbaden. But we'll have to wait a year to see it on stage. 
hopefully things have gone will have gone to back to normal by this time next year but we'll see about that i have another finished object and that's my it's the kind of green socks that i'm keeping for myself so i'm knitting on two pairs of green socks that i want to donate but these are actually going to be for me um, I bought the yarn at Vollerödel, the shop, it's not the shop that I used to work in, but it, it's a chain of shops, and um, so that was the one in Fulda, uh, where we went for a short holiday, and I bought the yarn, I bought two 50 gram balls of yarn, I started at the toe, so they are knit toe up, and it's just a simple uh, rip pattern, knit to purl to pattern, and then I did one row of knitting, and then I swap the knit and purl stitches that's all I did and um, because I knit them toe up I could knit the whole 50 gram balls up and now I have a pair of cozy blue green socks that remind me of my old workplace so that's that's the finished objects for today and I've already shown you a pair of socks so I'll as usual continue with the socks and I actually knit on all the socks I have in progress. So one pair is finished, there's only three more pairs that I'm working on at the moment. And last week I showed you this sock in a um, DK weight sock yarn by Opal that are going to be donated. And I started the second sock. Ah yeah, and, I, and last week I told you about the mistake I'd made. Um, so the pattern should have sort of swap to there and I accidentally knit the pattern on the same side so I just did three like this and then I did another three like that and for the second sock the pattern is supposed to be on this side of the sock and I had been thinking about whether or not I should repeat the mistake or maybe do it correctly for the second one and I have decided um, so first of all let me show you how the colors are completely different that's something I like a lot. And um, so if I turn it this way, you can see this is the ribbing that's at the back of the sock. That's like on top of the heel. And then with this sock, the pattern is on this side, but on that sock, the pattern is on that side. And I decided to mirror the pattern completely. So instead of starting with this, um, with the pattern on, on, on that side, which would have been on this side. I mirrored it and I started there. So I will do one, two, three on this sock, then I'll knit the heel and then I will repeat the mistake so that it looks as if it was on purpose. <laughs> and I think there's so much going on with these socks with the colors being different and with the pattern being on the, on the other side of the leg. I thought I'll keep the mistake in and I'll just pretend it's a design feature. So um, I've started with the third, it's not the third pattern repeat, those two are basically one pattern repeat, but with the third triangle and once that finished I, I can do the heel and then hopefully it won't take too long for the socks to be finished. And the second pair that I'm knitting to, to be donated uh, for women with ovarian cancer are these socks. And I'm using two different colors. So one is a is the new green that Opal came out with last month. And I'm using this color out of the um, Rainforest series. And I'm knitting them together in this pattern. And um, yeah, so I finished the first sock. And the pattern is round the foot completely so there's no different pattern on the sole of the foot i used the dark green only for the heel and toe and uh, i started the second sock only just so I, I did the ribbing and i just started off the pattern and again the colors come out completely different so um, i think this is where the color would be in the in the color repeat but as usual I just knit the way it came off the ball and um, so the ribbings look different and then the stripes will be different on the second sock but still I think you can see they belong together the heel and toe will be the same so I'm very happy with that 
and yeah this will take a little longer than the other sock it's uh, the four play yarn and because of the two color pattern it just um, yeah takes longer to finish but I think the sock that is going to take even longer is my brioche sock that I'm knitting out of these two colors um, the dark gray what's that oh it's a stitch marker <laughs> anyway and this is Schafparte. This is the German yarn from German Sheep. This beautiful color. And I'm knitting them in a two color brioche. And this goes nicely with my shawl. Ah, oh, once they're finished, I can, I can wear them with this uh, dress and, and this shawl. That should be nice. Um, it'd be even nicer if I did it as like kind of wrist warmer. Anyway, this is supposed to be a sock. And I am planning a two color double knitted toe so that these socks are reversible but until I get there I still have to add quite a bit onto the sock um, it's not really that slow going because I can knit with both yarns at the same time but it's um, I always think socks without toes uh, without heels are a bit boring I know they are sort of easier because you don't have to do the heel but I don't mind knitting the heel and it sort of gives me a landmark to show me where I am at and these just seem to take forever but I will try and um, just wait for the next color for the for the for the yellow to come again I'm not quite sure yet how the color repeat is working so not too sure how much I need to knit until the yellow comes again but um, this will be my next goal for this sock so these are all the socks I'm knitting on at the moment. I finished a pair of socks. I'm already thinking of starting the next pair, but I haven't decided yet. So uh, maybe I can put it off until I finish the next pair. That'd be great. Okay, other things I knit on. I did not knit on my memory blanket, but I continued knitting on the gray jacket. And um, I have finished the first sleeve. So... That's the whole sleeve done. As I told you, all the the cuff and and the what's usually the ribbing plus the collar are going to be knit in black, and the rest is going to be knit in grey. I started the second sleeve, but only just. So that's the next thing I'm going to do on that jacket. And I was looking at the yarn I have because this is like a. Um, you call it stash buster project or leftover yarn project so I was looking at my yarn and I didn't have enough gray nor enough black to do a whole jacket but I thought if I combine them it should be enough and I have used up quite a bit of the gray so I have of course enough to do the second sleeve and then I think I have another four balls of yarn 50 gram balls of yarn so I'm thinking that the jacket is probably not going to be as long as it's in the book which is like mid thigh um, but I hope it's going to be long enough to be a nice length so maybe it'll just reach my hip but what it means is I will probably have enough black yarn to do a nice shawl collar because that was the other problem I was thinking about is if I have so much grey that the jacket is fairly long, then maybe the black yarn won't be enough to um, to have a nice short collar. So um, I'm still not 100% sure how far the yarn will go. But um, yeah, I should finish the sleeve quickly so I can, as soon as I've knit one ball of the grey yarn into the front and back, I know how, how far I can go and then I can... I can measure and calculate how long the jacket will be and um, then the plan is to have a black edge on the bottom of the um, front and back that I would like to be the same length as the cuff on the sleeve and then the rest of the yarn is um, will have to be enough to do the short collar so I pick up stitches up one front round the neck down the other front and the fronts are really small so I need quite a bit of of ribbing um, to even get the the uh, jacket to close and then I would like to knit on so I can I can roll it round and have a shawl collar but I will see how that works um, but I'm really happy to have finished the sleeve and to have uh, used the black yarn and I like the way it looks and I'm looking very much looking forward to having this jacket 
finished. So that's the jacket. I continued knitting on the um, hat I'm knitting out of the Opal subscription yarn um, where there's a group on Ravelry where they pick one of the balls and um, declare the pattern battle. <laughs> so this is the color, color everybody is knitting with. Most of the people are knitting socks, so it's interesting to see the yarn with different pattern socks. But there's also some people are knitting other things than socks and I am knitting this hat. I had done the ribbing last week and I started knitting the two color or even three color pattern that I'd chosen to do. And clover is the word I couldn't remember last week. So these are not supposed to be flowers, but clover. Um, and I knit most of the pattern with this dark Is it lilac? Anyway, with this dark color, but the middle row I knit with the yellow, and there's one row of yellow down here that's hardly visible, and it's the same row that I just knit, so it just has these single yellow stitches um, that are the same here, and also here, and here in between the motifs, there's one yellow stitch, and within the motifs, it's three stitches of yellow, so it's a bit more visible. Um, I completely underestimated the um, contrast that would be there with the yellow and the main color because if you look at the ball of yellow it looks so bright and um, held next to this color I felt like it's so bright it'd be so visible but I completely underestimated what it looks like if you have just a little bit of the yellow and even like this it's more visible I think than the single stitches in the pattern, but I don't mind. Even if they get lost a bit, I think the flower-like pattern in the dark looks very nice. The plan is to have another row of flowers that are offset on top of these, and then I will continue knitting with the main color. And um, yeah, as soon as it's high enough, I'll do the decreases and finish it off. And um, yeah, I should have a nice hat. That's that. Um, I also continued knitting on the baby surprise jacket. I think I didn't show it last week because I hadn't knitted on it. Um, not too exciting um, because I'm just continuing knitting sort of the same pattern and uh, I need to do a few more decreases before I start increasing again. Um, yeah, so this is something that I just pick up if I don't, if I need some mindless knitting. And um, I do want to um, get on with that because I know that babies grow quickly and I don't want the baby to grow too quickly so um, that it's too small when it gets there. So I really have to get a move on with that. Um, that's one of my priorities for this week. I did a little bit of crochet um, last week and one project that got a bit of work done is my green granny square blanket. I started crocheting that just to um, use up the little 10 gram minis that I get from Opal every now and then and I had sold quite a lot of them but for some reason a lot of the green balls stayed behind so I started crocheting them into these granny squares and um, and then added them I started putting them together into a blanket and last week I had a customer who wanted to learn how to crochet granny squares so I started one with her and then finished it later and I also showed her how it's how you can crochet um, granny squares together and um, so I think yeah this was done except for the one square that I put in last week so it's now a three to three times four squares blanket small blanket and now my idea is not to add them one by one the way I did with these. So with these I would just add the last round in the light green and attach them while I went. But now that I've learned how to do the crochet as continuous crochet as you go, when I crocheted my dress, I plan on collecting more finished 
granny squares and then if I have like um, four or eight or something then I want to add them continuously so I don't have to cut off the light green yarn um, yeah because uh, the one drawback with these kind of projects is that the, uh, the many yarns you have to weave in so if I can instead of having to weave in two ends for every granny square if I can add four or eight squares in one go and then only have two ends to weave in that'd be fantastic but on, on the good side or the one of the advantages of having a project like that is that I can crochet these little squares anytime anywhere because I just need a 10 gram mini and a crochet um, a crochet hook and that's a very portable project so um, yeah I'm looking forward to um, continuing that at some point I'm not in a hurry it's, I don't have a goal for this blanket I just wanted to get um, rid of the mini balls and and also if I have leftover yarn that has green in it I will do a, um, a granny square for example once I finish these socks that'd be a nice square to add to that blanket so what's next um, oh yeah crochet I did some more crochet um, last week I showed you, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, I had finally finished the last piece for my canopy crochet long jumper front and back. So these are all the pieces that go into the fronts and backs. But this is the last one I crocheted and that in that pattern I'm supposed to crochet the sleeves and I have started the first sleeve. Um, Still has one ball of yarn hanging onto it so this is what the sleeve looks like I really like um, the colors with the black in between I think it makes the colors pop even more and they look even brighter um, as I said I um, made it a bit smaller than it's supposed to be it's supposed to be as wide as the other um, thing that I crocheted but I think this is more than wide enough for a sleeve down here and if I think it's too tight up here it does go around my arm even with the pullover underneath but I might just add a little bit of black um, at the sides at the top of the sleeve so I get a little bit of shaping and um, yeah so I need to crochet that as long as I want the sleeve to be I'm not too sure yet but I want it fairly long um, because it's it's a woolen it's 75% wool so it's a fairly warm pullover it's DK weight and crocheted so I want a fairly long sleeve then I will have to do the second sleeve maybe I'll take the time in between and sew the pieces together for the front and back that also helps with determining how long I want the sleeves because it depends on how wide the front and backs are they are not very wide at the moment but I might add a bit of black in between um, I haven't read through the instructions yet they say they give um, some help in how to uh, make it a bit bigger if it's too small so that's what I'm planning to do but this is uh, what I managed to do last week and I hope I'll be adding stripes to it um, as often as possible that's all the crochet I did and I think now we're down to my two knit alongs and again I will start with my own knit along that we're doing with this video channel and um, YouTube channel and my uh, group on Ravelry and there we are knitting all the patterns in the simple collection by Tim Ken Knits and I had started with the loop um, and I used a DK weight sock yarn held double with a strand of mohair silk and now I started uh, knitting the gloves or mittens and I chose to do the open version because I don't like gloves or mittens that are closed I won't wear them and I finished the first one and I've started the second one so again I'm using different mohair yarns this is the sock yarn I'm using it's a lifestyle series by Opal and um, so with this one I'm using the light blue mohair and with this I use the dark blue mohair and for the uh, cowl 
I knit half with the dark blue and half with the light blue and now I'm knitting one mitten I knit one mitten with a dark yarn and now I'm doing the second one with a light blue yarn and I really enjoy knitting them they're very easy to do simple collections so they're supposed to be simple um, I like the fit and I can't wait to finish the second one and I still have leftover yarn from the dark mohair and I'm guessing that I will have sock yarn left as well once I finish the mitten and I might just do the hat pattern as well it's the Bali hat um, and then I I would have a complete set with a hat cowl and the mittens so that's what I'm planning there at the moment so the last project again is the slip stravaganza knit along by Stephen West and it's as it's a mystery knit along maybe not everybody wants to see what I've knit so far so if you want to turn off or look away feel free to do so um, as I explained last week I am not trying to keep up with the speed of uh, of the uh, clues that are coming out um, but still I did put quite a bit of work into it so the first clue had the first section which was this one with a slip stitch pattern and the striped background and then we had the surprise clue that had the second part that was this one with the contrast color 2 that didn't appear down here and then last week no not last week Friday but the week before so the second official clue had section 3 and I had started that last week, but I hadn't finished it. And I have now managed to finish that clue. So it goes up to here. And it's this um, sort of diamond pattern that goes like this. And you stripe the contrast colors by themselves. So that's one bit where you can see the contrast colors clearly. But you still have the slip stitch pattern. But only the main color is being slipped. Um, yeah, looks quite nice. And I, but I only just finished that last night, and I did start the section four that was in clue three. Clue three contains um, sections four and five, and section four is knit with the main color and contrast color three. So in my case, that's the dark blue, and that's another slip stitch pattern. But as you can see, I've only just started it. And I have to repeat, I think the dark blue stripe is repeated three more times. And then the last bit is knit in the contrast color two, which for me is the turquoise. And um, yeah, we'll see when I get to that. And yesterday I was talking to my sister about the shape that this shawl is probably going to have. And at first I thought it was going to be a triangular shawl because the first bit uh, first part is a triangle but now the way the stitches are being picked up and continued knitting it looks like a um, half circle so the, the, there's no tip here the stitches are uh, distributed um, um, yeah all the same there's no point there's no increases at this bit so the increases all happen at the beginning and at the end of the row so these bits, you can see how this has grown compared to, uh, to the beginning bit. So I'm very interested to see how this is going to be resolved or if that stays that way. It just makes sure that the shawl stays on your shoulders nicely. But there's one more clue that we are waiting for. It's due this Friday and Stephen West already said that in that clue we'll get a chance to um, change the size or decide the size of our shawl so um, there will be several options and we can decide if we want to go for a very big one or keep it a bit smaller um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that no matter if I finished the other sections until then I'm pretty sure I won't finish them all but I will keep continue I will keep knitting uh, on it as often as possible without neglecting all the other projects so uh, that should be interesting to see how far I get in the coming in this coming week yeah 
So that's everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed seeing my projects grow and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!